Today, we're looking at the design for the Sysport build. But first, here's the jingle. As you can see, the Sustainer collection is now pretty much complete. All our tools are put away, all the things we're gonna use in the business are all stored, catalogued inside the sustainers. So now I want to build this Sysport unit, or at least the base of this. Don't forget, if you've seen the workshop design video, there's a bookcase above, and then a Sysport at the bottom to store all these devices. This video, we're gonna look at the design, how I approach the design, how I work out which stain is going to go where, the overall dimensions, all that good stuff that we need to understand before we can get ahead with the build. So we're going up to the computer and we'll go through that. This is the design that we're going for. You can see we're going to have five sustainers per sysport, four sysports in total, and a space here for some adjustable shelving. Each of the drawers pulls out, it's a full extension drawer and that means without taking the sustainer out of the drawer unit I can open the lid and I can get full access inside. I want to walk you through how I got to this design. First thing I looked at was the actual sustainers that I have. I have 20 or I'll end up with 20 sustainers in total and that's a mix of sustainer 1, sustainer 2, sustainer 3s and sustainer 4s. I've not got any sustainer fives and I'm not planning on buying any. So next job was to actually measure the sustainers. Each sustainer is, comes out at 396 millimeter wide and that's consistent across the entire range. And as you'd expect, it's the height that varies. A sustainer one is 105 millimeters high, sustainer two, 157.5 millimeters, sustainer three is 210 millimeters, a sustainer four, 315 millimeters, and the sys five is 420. Now, what's interesting about these heights is they're actually, um, there's a ratio here. If you take a sustainer one, it's 105, you can see a sustainer three, 210, is twice as large. Sustainer 2 is one and a half times as large, Sustainer 4 is three times as large, and Sustainer 5 is four times as large. So we can actually use those height ratios to our advantage, and I'm just going to call those units. That, in theory, should make it a lot easier to do the design and work out the sizes by using units rather than worrying about overall millimetres. If I look at my collection, I've got four Sustainer 1s, uh, four units high in total. I've got 12 sustainer 2s, 18 units high in total, 2 sustainer 3s, 4 units high in total, and 2 sustainer 4s at 6 units in total, which means I've got 20 sustainers um, with 32 units. Now that's useful and we're going to come back to those measurements or those numbers shortly. I also am going to use the Festool LR32 system to give me 5mm holes, so that means all my holes are going to be at 32mm 32 uh, 32 centres. The size of the gap we're working to is 2310mm um, long, it's going to be 400mm um, deep, and an approximate height of around about 105 oh, but that's not really that critical to me. The drawers are going to be 40 millimeters deep, 350 millimeters front to back, and 460 millimeters wide. And I'll come back and let you know how I got to those calculations in a second. And each sysport is going to be 400 millimeters front to back, and the total length of my sysport is going to be 2310 to fit into the available gap that I have. How I got to those calculations, if you look here, a drawer is 396. Now that's the width of a sustainer. Either side of the sustainer is going to be an 80 millimeter side to my drawer, 18 millimeters on each side, which is 36 millimeters. And they're going to be two full extension drawer runners. Each one is 14 millimeters thick, so 28 in total, giving me a total draw width of 460 millimeters. Now I know my draw width, I can work out the size of an individual sysport. So a single sysport will be 460, which is my draw width, plus a side panel on the left of 18 millimeters and a side panel on the right of 18 millimeters, 36 millimeters, giving me a total sysport width of 496 millimeters. 
I can now divide that into my available space, 2310, and that gives me four sys ports. So I now know I'm building a unit of four sys ports wide, and that's how I got to that space. 2310 divided by 496 is actually round about 4.6, but um, 0.6 of a sys port is not much use to me, and that's why I had shelves on the far end. Now I know I've got four sys ports, I can now look at my total sustainer collection, and that was 20 sustainers, if you remember, divided by four, so I'm going to put five sustainers in each of my sys ports. I know my sys ports are 32 units in total, so that divided by four means eight units. So each sys port is now going to be five, whole five sustainers, or have five shelves inside it, with a total dimension of eight units. With that calculated, I can now just play around. And that's what I did here. I just made a very, very simple diagram and I just moved around my um, my different sustainers. And you can see what I've got here, the sustainer ones, twos, and so on and so forth. And this would be my entire collection. And what was important is I have no more than five sustainers per sysport and they don't total up any more than eight. And although I made a mistake in how I laid this one out here, this is a, a sustainer three, which is two units high. These are all sustainer twos, which are one and a half, so one and a half, three, four and a half, six. Six plus two is eight units. So as long as everything stacks up to eight units and there's no more than five shelves per sysport, then my dimensions are always going to work out. And that's how I got to the overall design. Now that might sound a bit confusing as the first um, run through, and it took me <laughs> quite a lot of thinking and planning and measuring to, to get to that point. But I was really pleased with that. Worked out the total number of sustainers I was going to have. Worked out how wide a sys port was going to be, therefore I can work out the total number of sys ports I was going to have. I can then divide my sustainers by that number to give me how many sustainers per sysport I'm going to hold. And then I can just me measure out, play around with the, the layout to make sure that all my units come out as equal. And you can see I added some spare sustainers just to fill up some gap, but that gives me a little bit of flexibility for future storage needs. So that's it. I now understand my layout. With that done, I can now go over to SketchUp and I can start to craft this thing out. The way I use SketchUp is I start to design in the way I'm going to build. So the first thing I'm going to put in place is a base. It's going to sit on the floor. The base is going to be 2310, 2.31 meters long and 400 millimeters wide. And all my material is 18 millimeter plyboard. Once I've got my base done, I can then come in and look at my sides. My sides are going to be 1024 millimeters high. Uh, 400 millimeters deep with holes, two rows of holes to allow for my uh, sliding rails at 32 millimeter centers. Now this 1024 is an interest, interesting measurement. If I were to work out the dimensions of each of the sustainers and I were allowed to allow for five shelves as well, the total height I actually need is 1000 millimeters. Now, I'm going to use the LR32 system here. So that really works best when your panels are a multiple of 32. And if you divide 1,000 by 32 millimetres, you actually get somewhere around about 31 and a quarter, I think. So that's not going to work very well as an overall panel size on the LR32. When we come to build this and we start to drill the holes, I'll revisit that and explain in a bit more detail why that's important. But 31.25 is not really useful to me. So I round that up to 32 and 32 holes at 32 millimeter spacings equals 1024 millimeters. So I've designed the size of my panels to allow me to use the tools available, the LR32 system. And that's the only complicated piece, to be honest with you. And once you've got that, you're pretty home and dry. Each of these is going to be fastened to the base using um, dominoes. I think there were six millimeter, 40, uh, 40 mil dominoes from memory. And the spacings between these is 460, which is set by our draw width. 
I have a space at the end, 362 millimeters, and I'm just drilling that to allow for some variable shelves. Not sure what I'm gonna put on that yet, but it all seems useful to use the space. Once that's in place and they're cut, I can then move on to the top. Again, the top is gonna to be 400 millimeters, um, the full length, 18 millimeter pine. You'll notice I've set it forward by 50 millimeters, and that's because I wanted a small overhang. And that's purely a visual thing, it's an aesthetic thing. There's no real structural reason for that. And then I'll just route a bull nose on the end of, of that panel, and that will just make the thing look a little bit pretty. That again will be fixed on um, maybe a couple of dominoes, more likely to be pocket hole joinery. I can then move on to the back. Now, if you remember from the earlier part of this video when I was showing you the space, that wall is already cladded. I cladded that some time ago when it was my hand tool workshop and it's already got tongue and groove pine cladding across that wall. So rather than take that off and put it back on this, I'm just gonna use that as the back. So I'll actually build this thing in position. And then again, I'll just use some pocket hole screws on these boards to attach it to that wall. And that would give me uh, the back panel and make the entire thing incredibly strong and secure and stable. If you're not gonna do that, um, I would recommend not going for a full back on this, but put a brace across the top and a brace across the middle, and that will hold this thing square and make it stable for you. There's no need to put a full back on this, but go ahead if you wish to do so. This is the drawer design. You can see it's a really simple design. It's going to have a plywood base. In fact, it's a 12 millimeter thick plywood base, and that's going to be recycled material. Uh, I'm taking one of the walls down in the workshop, and then I'll be cladding it. That wall at the moment is 12 millimeter ply, so I'm going to recycle that and repurpose it. Very, very simple frame. It's 18 millimeter ply around the outside, uh, cut to a 40 millimeter depth, and then the plywood will have a dado in those three rails and that'll be glued into position. Simple stop at the back, stops the sustainer sliding backwards and then the, the rails on the side and that's where my overall 460 millimeter dimension fits in and that will fit inside the, um, the sysports. With our drawers made, I can now go ahead and fit those into the sysports using our um, design and nothing complicated about that. And then the final part of the jigsaw is I will just add a couple of shelves here. I'll make a decision before I put these shelves in what I want to store inside here. Uh, I do have a, a Festool toolbox that might work quite well inside these shelves. But I've got some other bits and bobs as well that might be useful. So we'll make a decision what we're going to store there and then we'll use that to put the height of the shelves in. I'll pre-drill it with 32 millimeter holes um, front and back and that just gives me that flexibility. So that's pretty much it. That's how I got to our sysport design. With that, we'll go back to the workshop and we'll start to build this. So that's it, we've got our design. I hope that made sense. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll come back and I'll respond to those. It can be a bit complicated, so you may need to watch the design video through a couple of times, um, but it does make sense. And as we go through the build, uh, we, I'm sure it will um, resonate as well. Don't forget, it's a multi-part series, this one. So subscribe, hit that notification button um, so you don't miss anything. See you next time.